Roger. Had a flight message from uh, from uh, ThinkPAC saying forces are ready and weather forecasts favorable for strikes against targets 48 and 9. That's Haiphong and, and Hanoi POL. Wednesday after uh, 1100 hours, uh, which means 1100 H hours, which means 11 p.m. tonight. And I'd like to go ahead and issue the authority if acceptable to you. All right. Uh, I've talked to Buzz. He he agrees. We I got talked to anybody else. That comes quicker than I thought. I well, was hoping we could do it Friday. No, you're, you're quite right. I told you. Here's what we got. We got to. We got three things happening. We got Ball testifying before Fulbright Thursday. And. That's bad. We got the goal leaving Thursday, coming back to Moscow and wrapping up Thursday and leaving Friday morning. We got my going into the Midwest on Thursday. Uh, those three events are pretty, pretty important. I was going to talk to you about them this morning on in connection with Thursday, and that's why I'm just thinking out loud now. Just. To, I want to review this. I don't think it would be much position to uh, say anything to these. Let me ask you this, Bob. Uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, are you familiar with the with the uh, historical battleship Maine? Now, what happens to our tanker there if we hit the same proposition? What's going to be their response? I'm not, let me say, I'm not absolutely sure that there is any tanker there right at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one didn't finish unloading within its allotted time of seven days, as best we can tell, and it was to leave uh, early in order to let the second one in. The first one leaving without finishing unloading, the second one due in uh, today or last night, their time. Uh, I'm not absolutely positive there's one there today, but if one is there, uh, the chances of hitting it are small. If we do hit it, uh, now that's I where I want to get I think exposed. It's really serious. I think it's serious. Uh, where you're sitting there, uh, uh, let's put you now in, in their position. I think it's serious, Mr. President, but I think that, that, that we have told the Russians just as clearly as we put it in writing that we have done everything possible to avoid antagonizing them in this military conflict. And I think while it would be serious, and while we would have a very strong protest, I myself doubt that uh, it would lead to any military action. As a matter of fact, the appraisals are that if we put a, if we mine the harbor and stop Soviet ships from coming in there, it won't lead to military action. So if we hit the tanker, uh, I doubt that it would lead to military action. I, I nonetheless recognize it as a serious action, and I think the. We must do everything possible to avoid it. I think it's extremely unlikely that we could plan the operation so that weather and no tanker would coincide. As best we can tell, they're having difficulties moving POL out of Haiphong, with the result that it takes longer to unload these vessels than it formerly did. And, and since they're sending three tankers a month in there, and since under best of circumstances it takes about seven days per tanker, you can see that the month's pretty full. And uh, this third tanker due in this month apparently has been diverted to Shanghai because they didn't have enough time to unload at Haiphong. So the possibility of getting a coincidence of good weather and no tanker is damn small. Uh, but you do feel there's a possibility today. Well, that's what the message says. No, I, I, no, I shouldn't say there's a po I just don't know for sure that at the minute there's a tanker there. I could find out in a few hours probably. If there isn't a tanker there today, it's just sheer coincidence. It's the fact that the first one is moving out and the second one moving in. So I don't want to give you the wrong impression. The probabilities are there's a tanker there now. All right, now that that is 11 our time tonight. That's 11 p.m. tonight, our time. Do you think of any other things we ought to do? No, I don't think so. I think we want Did you? What was your, what significance did you give Russ Wire yesterday? I didn't put any particular significance on it. I thought he was uh, 
more or less uh, trying to firm things up a little bit. Well, I or thought so. Say, I, saying to us, to go ahead. Well, I thought so too, but I didn't. He didn't have any real doubts in his mind when he left, as best I could tell. He wished. He sort of wished we could put the problem behind us, but he didn't know how to do that. And under the circumstances, thought we should go ahead. And I thought that was essentially the wise thing. I think now what we've got to analyze very, very carefully, and we have. But before we, before we execute, I think we've got to say, do we get enough out of this for the price that we pay? Yeah. yeah. Now you, you can. The hard kids are all they're they're starting their campaign tomorrow on the yeah. Senate floor. They're speaking. Well, look, we've uh, got an article this morning yeah. in the paper, same thing, on exactly that point. And I think the answer is that, that uh, this is just a, a, a minor incident in the war. And it's almost an incident that you can't avoid taking. I don't see how you can go on fighting out there, Mr. President, without doing this, especially, frankly. I don't think you can keep the morale of your troops up. I don't think you can keep the morale of the people in the country who support you up without doing this. We're at about that point. Now, in addition to that, I myself believe it has military value, although I don't, for the minute, put the weight on it that uh, the chiefs do. But I don't put the cost on it that some in state do. I don't put the cost on it that George Ball does, for example. I don't believe any Soviet experts, including Tommy Thompson, put the cost on it that George Ball does. What do you think we ought to do now with the state? Well, assuming you wanted to do this, uh, I'd be inclined to send out the execute order. I don't like to do these on a half-assed basis, and they do need some time to be absolutely sure that they have authority to do it, so they take all the necessary precautions and preparations for the mission. So I'd send out the execute order now if you want to do it. If later in the day you want to cancel, we can always cancel, but it's much easier to send execute now and cancel later than it is to defer a decision and then late in the day send out an execute. So I'd send out the execute now, and then maybe at at noontime, uh, or even later in the afternoon, talk to George Ball. That the only thing that needs to be done, uh, I think, that hasn't really been done thoroughly, is to go over our plans for announcing this after it's done. I, I think that needs further work, and I'd like to get George and Walt and myself and personally go into that late in the day. Yes, I thought about that yesterday and thought we ought to spend some of the time today at lunch, and I think the light of the editorial this morning that you probably ought to try to see two or three members of that board uh, here at the post. Maybe Bradley and, yeah. and Kay Wiggins. And, and Wiggins. Yeah. Those three people. Yeah. Because uh, it's a pretty good editorial this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Bob, I would go ahead with this uh, suggestion you make. Then uh, We'll talk before yeah, then you the feel lunch. Free, you feel free to cancel later in the day. We can we can always do that. But I want you to carefully weigh as uh, uh, you you gave uh, just now uh, the, when you're talking about your troops and things of that kind. I, I wish you'd just build two columns for us to let us just look at and think carefully because we we might uh, we might have a lot of problems in the morning. We don't have tonight. Yeah, you're right. We might have them in You're right. Berlin. We might have yeah. lots of places. Now, what is going to flow from this? We know that we'll we'll get some uh, temporary approval, but uh, if uh, things go bad, that won't last very long. Yeah. And what what do we get out of it, really? Yeah. Uh, things are going reasonably well in the South, aren't they? Yes, I think so. What are these 6,000 men doing? They're trying to locate the enemy, I see, and they run them into caves. You yeah. know anything about that? Yeah. And they, but it's a small, it, it's just so typical, Mr. President. It's a relatively small enemy force. We think we're, we're uh, taking a heavy toll of them, but it just scares me to see what we're doing there. We're taking 6,000 U.S. soldiers with God knows how many airplanes and helicopters and firepower and going after a bunch of half-starved uh, beggars uh, and a small, at 2,000 at most, and probably less than that. And this is what's going on in the South, and, and the, the great danger, and it's not a certainty, but it's a, a danger we need to look at it, 
is that the day can keep that up almost indefinitely. Well, I'd say with the, the manpower resources they have, they can. Yeah, that's the point. The only thing that will prevent it, Mr. President, is their morale breaking. And if we, if we hurt them enough, it isn't so much that they don't have more men as it is that they can't get the men to fight because the men know that once they get assigned to that task, their chances of living are small. I, I myself believe that's the only chance we have of winning this thing. And that's one reason I am in favor of this POL, because there's no question but what the troops in the South, the VC and North Vietnamese troops in the South, ultimately become aware of what's going on in the North. We see this through the interrogation and the prisoner reports. I've been trying to watch those carefully to see what comes through those. And they know that we're bombing in the North. Now, they know we haven't uh, destroyed the place, so that, uh, in a sense, our bombing isn't fully effective, but they also know that nobody is protecting North Vietnam, and we just have a free reign. And when we bomb this POL, ultimately, that will become known to the North Vietnamese soldiers and the Viet Cong in the South, and this is just one more uh, foundation brick that's knocked away from their support. And when they see they're getting killed in such high rates in the South, and they see that the supplies are, are less likely to come down from the north, I think it'll just hurt their morale a little bit more. And to me, that's the only way to win, because we're, we're not killing enough of them to make it impossible for the north to continue to fight. But we are killing enough to, to destroy the morale of those people down there if they think it's going to have to go on forever. All right, go ahead, Bob. Thanks.